Hello and welcome to UAT Time within the United Countries special by First Ukraine. You can find us on the frequencies available on our website, firstua.com. I'm Sergei Vilichansky. And I am Olivier Drin. UAT Time is dedicated to bring Ukraine and Europe closer to each other by addressing the Red Ukraine to the rest of the world. The beginning of this year started with two press conferences and one State of the Union address of three presidents from the USA, Ukraine and Russia. Barack Obama has come across as a proud leader of his country. I told you earlier, all the talk of America's economic decline is political hot air. Well, so is all the rhetoric you hear about our enemies getting stronger and America getting weaker. Let me, let me tell you something. The United States of America is the most powerful nation on Earth, period. Period. Yeah. You know, I, I listened to the State of the Union address, and, mm -hmm. uh, and, I, and that's pretty much the, in a nutshell, mm -hmm. the attitude. Mm -hmm. um, and they, you know, to me, they have the right to feel so because of, you know, the way they, they, they are. I know you say that France is the greatest, you know, <laughs> nation on earth. Not, not, not <coughs> as powerful as the USA, but the greatest, yes. <laughs> but, but seriously, um, uh, it was quite an interesting uh, address because uh, the, the, some of the statements and some of the uh, uh, positions, the evaluations of mm -hmm. uh, what uh, he said and the facts and the uh, he kind of came across as the father mm -hmm. of the nation, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, uh, so, uh, but besides this, there there have been a, uh, a few other things that took place. Actually, it's been what almost two weeks mm -hmm. since the beginning of this year, and uh, many things already took place. Uh, as we said in the beginning. Uh, Ukraine President Petro Poroshenko gave a press conference. The Russian President Vladimir Putin also. And he gave the interview to to the magazine. Yeah, uh, and um, it was quite interesting because, uh, as uh, you know, uh, on the opposite of uh, uh, the way Barack Obama uh, presented himself, uh, it was interesting to read as uh, Mr. Putin kind of humbly mm -hmm. portrayed himself as Russia does not claim to be the superpower. Because Russia is not the instrument to be a superpower. <laughs> well, that's, that's kind of interesting because, uh, you know, if I'm a, a small, uh, a tiny boy and, uh, and there are some bigger guys if I don't want to get into the fight, mm -hmm. I'll basically say, oh, I don't try to be, uh, you know, but, yeah. but, then, but then when they turn around, I can kick them, you know, on their back. Yes, but Russia can only kick them on the back or, and disturb, but not, uh, not face the USA or the Open Union. <clears throat> Uh, the fact is that now, uh, for me, uh, I saw this article on Build, yeah, Build, yes, yeah, Build yes. newspaper. For me, a fact is that Putin now that now Russia is not a superpower and will not be again a superpower. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know that the situation, economic situation, is very bad and will be and will be bad uh, and uh, worse than uh, even uh, now. And. Uh, and he tried to give a good image of him. I am not an aggressor. I am not a, a bad president. Uh, and this is only a campaign of communication. Yeah. And Putin <coughs> needs to restore his image. And that's why he's in Syria. That was, that's why he, he gave this, uh, this interview to build newspaper. But see this interview. You can read that Putin take care about people without border, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. blah. That's Come on, he want to he want to think that he want me to think and you to think <coughs> that he's a humanistic man. Well, this 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 is a job, really. The surprising to me was the price for oil right now less than twenty seven dollars, mm -hmm. uh, or less than twenty eight. Actually, by the end of our show, 
it's going to change drastically. Maybe 25. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> um, he still, you know, stays firmly on the position, as they have said for, you know, so, uh, so many months of the Crimea annexation, that he justifies that we didn't, go in war, we didn't occupy anybody, we didn't shoot, and no person died as a result of the Crimea events. Not one. Actually, it's not true. No. You know, there were a couple of, several soldiers that really were shot mm -hmm. at that time. But it was not a big deal at that, mm -hmm. at the, at that moment because, suppose, because of a huge event that, uh, uh, you know, uh, Took but place. Come on, really, if we do an analysis, Putin can only say that. If, he, if tomorrow Putin say, okay, we are in war uh, in the Donbass, we uh, send some uh, soldiers in the Donbass, we uh, did uh, the annexion of Crimea with yeah. some uh, uh, died soldiers. What will be the result? That the result will be that uh, Putin will not stay in the power for a long time. Yeah. Then right. now, uh, the only way uh, to put into stay in the power is uh, this communication. I am with the people. I don't take care about the borders. I am here to help the people. Uh, I am not in war. Russia is not in war because he wants to stay in the power. He is trying to maintain his faith. Yeah, and yeah. But the, w what will be the result in, in those next months? For me, uh, you know, the ruble will, uh, will decrease, and I think we will have in a few weeks maybe uh, 90 or maybe 100 ruble for one euro, and that will have a psychological effect yeah. on the mentality of the, of the Russian people. And now, what do we have in Russia? We have two big, strong elements for the Russian people. The first element is the propaganda on the TV. And the second element is the fridge. My fridge is empty or not. Yeah. And they will, they will listen to the TV, they will show the TV, they will watch the TV and believe the TV yeah. if their fridge are not empty. But when the fridge will be empty, they will not trust the TV. Yeah. Um, again, uh, a lot of uh, our resources, Ukrainian resources, quoted Bild, uh, stating that... Um, Russia spends about 79 million euro every month to maintain the so-called republics, mm -hmm. uh, you know, militants and, 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 uh, and all that. And it's just for the, you know, to pay the pensions, to pay the social uh, payments. Uh, and we're not even including the army support. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about you know, more, much more than that. So it, it, it comes to about one billion a year. Yep. So, uh, and then uh, in addition to that, uh, this decrease of uh, oil price and their budget is based on uh, oil costing 50, 50. 50 yep. dollars. Yep. Now it's less than 28, 27. Uh, and it's uh, and it's still going down. Yes, still going down. Uh, you, and it, you don't know even where it's going to stop because uh, Iran, right? Iran now, will sell in a few weeks. Actually, the, as far as I know, the first cargo already, you know, sh start, start on their way. Yeah. Right now. That means they will first. be on the market uh, this month. Yes. All right. And I think I, I we have to wait uh, maybe a. A price for a bar, uh, for oil about twenty twenty five. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, let's come back to our own soil here. But I want to add another yeah. fact. Uh, you say one billion uh, euro per year. Pretty much, yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think now, uh, if 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 I look the history of uh, uh, Russia, of Soviet Union, and the history of the F Russian Federation, I can do like some parallelisms. Yeah. Then. Uh, at the end of the Soviet Union, you have two, two, two very strong uh, events. The price of oil yes. decrease, mm -hmm. decreased, and also the war in Afghanistan. Yeah. And now we are, we, well, in the same, same, yeah. uh, same uh, way, it you know. You, we, some we, similarities, yes, yes. Yes, we have this war in Syria, we have yeah. this war in Donbass, we have the annexion of Crimea. 
Okay. And we have this, the price of the whole will decrease. Mm -hmm. And I think we have to wait from maybe a big change in Russia, in Russia, in the Russian Federation. Okay. Okay. Big change will okay. be. Okay, let's move on. Um, uh, I want uh, us to see another video clip uh, because we're talking about uh, presidents, uh, actually, you know, yep. the State of the Union by Barack Obama and then the interview of uh, Vladimir Putin. And the Ukrainian president, Petro Poroshenko, gave a press conference on the 14th of January and he provided a confident and a positive attitude. Let's take a look. I can assure you that we have completely changed the country's agenda. If you remember, back in January 2015, the agenda was how to survive. Now, in January 2016, the agenda is how to become better. And that's a very, very good confirmation to the people. I listened to this uh, uh, press conference and uh, he sounded very confident. And I think it's good. I think it's good and I think he's right. Okay. I think Ukraine is going uh, uh, on the right way, is going to the, to the, to the European, uh, European values and is going to the European Union. But also uh, Ukraine now is definitely an independent state. Well, yes, yes, we're, we're talking about yeah. and uh, for me, this is, uh, economically. No, one, and, one, one, one year uh, before, uh, yes, the, 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 the target was how to survive. Now the target is how to develop, yes. how to go to the European Union. And this is a big difference, big difference. Actually, yes, it's, it's been a year and uh, it was good that he pointed that out because at that time we thought, are we going to last for how many months? You know, are we going to survive or are we going to announce default or, you know, and now we, it's a totally different uh, mood, yep. different attitude, which is which is now uh, now you know the, the, this 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 war in Donbass or the this, the annexion of Crimea really is is a war for independence of Ukraine, and now uh, Ukraine is definitely independent. I, at least uh, I would say we're moving uh, towards that direction with the help of our partners. Actually, uh, it was uh, uh, interesting for me to find this information that last night. At Borispol International Airport, the United States delivered $23 million in vital military communications and medical equipment to Ukraine. The shipment included $21 million in secure radio equipment to help Ukrainian soldiers communicate effectively and $2 million in battlefield life-saving medical equipment. So with the help like this, we're not only talking about, you know, surviving, we're talking about advancing. Hopefully, at least uh, getting, you know, getting uh, our soldiers and uh, army prepared for the future developments. For the future development of the war in the Donbass, because definitely I am sure that uh, the Ukrainian army won, won the war. Yeah. And I'm sure that uh, the Minsk agreement is only here to freeze the situation. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, one day uh, and uh, very quickly, Donbass will come back to Ukraine. Yes. Now, uh, since the beginning of this year, some other things took place, and um, we're talking about uh, the explosion in Istanbul, mm -hmm. in Turkey. And of course, every time things like this happen, we need to ask a question who will take credit for it or who, is, who gets benefits from it? Yeah, uh, you know, now we have this Islamic State, and this is uh, the Islamic State with the, uh, this uh, terrorist well, act. Yeah. But, but, but you know that uh, the Turkish police uh, uh, on Wednesday, the January 13, uh, detained three citizens of Russian Federation, and they're under suspects, they're sus the suspects, and being uh, part of the preparation of the, this terroristic act. Uh, that's, uh, uh, it came from Reuters, um, so have you heard anything I, I, of that? I, I, you know, f I, I, only, I, I know that uh, we, we think that that's, that's of course a, a terrorist act, and a terrorist act come from, for, in my opinion, for the um, 
Islamic uh, party or Islamic revendications. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, we don't have to see uh, Russia everywhere, no. Uh, you know, Russia cannot be everywhere. Russia is not a superpower, okay? okay. Then, uh, in my opinion, this is more a terrorist act with some, <coughs> um, can say, links with uh, Islamic State. Uh, because, you know, uh, this uh, Islamic State uh, in Syria or now in Libya, and uh, they really want to disturb this uh, zone. Yeah. And uh, this is another policy. This is not the, the Russian policy. This is the, a policy of terrorist policy of the Islamic <coughs> State. Why? Because you know that uh, Turkey is a NATO member with the U.S., with France, and mm -hmm. they are... They, 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 they are fighting with us in Syria. Then they are, we have the same enemy. We have the same enemy. Yeah. And for me, this is, we have, we have to see in the historic act maybe some link with, <coughs> the, with, the, with the Islamic State. Do you know what um, really amazed me uh, in the uh, State of the Union address mm -hmm. of Barack Obama? Because uh, what what really amazed me was uh, not the bragging, not the uh, showing off of how good they are. They don't have to. True. They True. don't have to. But what the the follow, the next statement that I want us to see really showed proved to me why it's better for Ukraine to be with the West than with the East. Seriously. At the same time, the leader of the most developed country expresses his dreams and sets an example of greatness. Let's take a look. For the loved ones we've all lost, for the families that we can still save, let's make America the country that cures cancer once and for all. What do you think, huh? That's, to me, mm -hmm. that's the sign of greatness, where you don't have to prove it or show it, but let's make, let's make the, you know, the country that cures cancer. I mean, we're talking about like a major disease that hasn't really been mm -hmm. dealt with, mm -hmm. you know, and that's the way greatness is proven. That's the way greatness is shown. That's what I believe. And that's what really, you know, to me... Yeah. Uh, for me, this is really, uh, I spent two years in USA uh, when I was young, and uh, you know, w when you are strong, you, you don't have to say, uh, I have a big car, I have a lot of money, I'm yeah. very strong. Everybody knows <coughs> that you are very strong. And uh, it's like, see the difference between uh, Putin and Obama. Putin need to do uh, a military parade, uh, show he, uh, his uh, forces to say, I am very strong. And, and Obama say, okay, I am USA. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Only. All I am right. USA. And, uh, you know, uh, look at everybody want to go to USA or to the European Union. And uh, we don't have to, to show that we are very strong because everybody know that we are very strong. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, let's come back to the current events. Uh, recently, again, a couple of days ago, uh, an uh, unexpected uh, visit from the Russian representative, uh, uh, Boris Grizlov, yep. the Russia's representative to the trilateral liaison group, Boris Gr uh, Grizlov, arrived in Kyiv yep. on Monday at the personal invitation of Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko. They met uh, at about 10 p.m. and the meeting lasted for a couple of hours. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the press conference, Petro Poroshenko stated that uh, no hidden agenda was there mm -hmm. to discuss. Uh, they were preparing for the meeting, and uh, they had to. Um, what, what What do you think? What do you think? Yeah, I talked about that with some uh, friend of the Russian opposition, and uh, for me, this is very interesting. I think the Kremlin uh, is um, looking for a way to. Uh, to end the Ukraine crisis. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they are looking for a way to end this Ukrainian crisis and to definitely uh, go away 
uh, from Ukraine, and I try to, to to find this way. And for me, this is uh, so you connect that this unexpected visit with uh, what you say that Russia is trying to pull out. Yep. So they want to. It's interesting. Well, definitely with the economic situations uh, that's going to go worse. Uh, but isn't that too late for them to try to maintain face? Uh, for me, this is too late. You are right. But when you are uh, president of the Russian Federation and when you are like uh, put in uh, psychology, mm -hmm. you think that you will win until the end. And, uh, but now I think because of the Russian elite and the lobbying of the Russian yeah. elite, uh, everybody says, okay, we are losing money, then we need to stop uh, uh, this war in Ukraine. And uh, I think this is a key point. I don't know what will happen, but I yeah. think we will have a big change. Uh, and this is the first step of uh, a new uh, era for, uh, for yeah. Ukraine. <clears throat> well, uh, you were... Uh part of Maidan, and as many of us uh, at that time, now a lot of things have changed. Uh, well, a lot of things are changing and uh, reforms are still on the way mm. and, and, and stuff. But um, when Maidan took place, no one knew and no one planned it, but it was a wondrous news to learn that the Ukrainian documentary was nominated out of 100 options for Oscars. Let's take a look. For Best Documentary Feature, the nominees are Amy, Cartel Land, The Look of Silence, What Happened Miss Simone, and Winter for Fire, Ukraine's Fight for Freedom. For a cheap yeah. Isn't, isn't that wonderful? Yes, I know the, the, the producer of this documentary. Have you seen this? Yeah, 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 it's amazing, uh, amazing. It's, uh, it's, I, I saw the, the, the why well, it's amazing. A lot of people uh, can't watch it, those I, that already, really... I, I have to be honest with you. I saw, you, do, you know, the band annonce, the trailer, a few minutes. And for me, this, I say to my friend, it's very difficult to see it's that. It's hard. And I, I, I am not ready to see all the documentary. Yeah. I see only one part because for me, you know, yeah. it's, it's very difficult to see. You know, uh, on the other side, it, it, uh, it is very uh, good that the, this kind of uh, video is uh, nominated for Oscars out of five. Yeah. So, but regardless, if it wins or not, uh, it's a good way right, right now to show the whole, to the whole world what really took place, because there are some graphic pictures of killing and murdering mm -hmm. of uh, our citizens by the, by the powers of Yanukovych, yep. and so the people can understand much mm -hmm. better mm -hmm. what has been taking place. Yeah, in and Ukraine. I think this is a very good documentary. I, see, uh, I saw only a few minutes the presentation of the documentary, and uh, f honestly, at the end, uh, I, can, I, I cry, you know, because yeah. uh, that was... Uh, it is, it is. Yeah. Uh, and uh, those people that were there can't even watch it for now. Yeah, so it's, it's, gonna it's take impossible some time. because you cried, yes. Yeah. Like that. So let's, uh, let's uh, hope uh, it wins, but regardless, it's already a success. Yeah, you know as that well. uh, I put some photo of me down on my Facebook page, and uh, one year after, one year after. And when now I saw the, those uh, pictures, and this is the same emotion. But we have to show. We have to show that. Yeah. Yeah. So we pretty much have covered some major uh, things that took place these couple of weeks of this of the new year. I think so. we have to do uh, some uh, some uh, recording like that. You know, uh, maybe talk about uh, some uh, uh, international event in every while. once yeah. a month. Once yeah. a month. Yeah. Perhaps. Yes. Perhaps. It was United Country UAT time by First Ukraine. Olivier Vidrin and Sergei Velichansky were working for you in the studio. Stay with us and we'll show to you the ready train. Thank you for being with us. Have a good day and see you soon.